Hello and welcome back everyone to Forbidden Memories Vanilla 15, uh, 15 card drop part 2. And in this episode, we actually got ourselves a water girl and an elves light. Woohoo! Unfortunately, a majority of the equip spells in the game are totally fucking useless because they don't power up dragons. Yes, dragons are statistic are very factually the literal best type in the game in this in this game. Not only is the strongest literal monster in the game a dragon type, but the the best single card that the player has access to is a dragon type, and the best fusion monster in the game is technically a dragon type. It's actually a thunder type on its card text, but the dragon type equips uh, work with it. So there. Uh, meanwhile, on the subject of powerful creatures, uh, I am currently looking forward to Zombie Warrior, among other things, especially the peculiar fusions that apparently allow us to pull from the evolutionary table out of our asses. Oh, white but he got magical white magical hat. hat with the sun. You know, it makes no mention of the handsome fella who's wearing the hat. So sometimes the game will let you fucking fuse, which is awesome. And sometimes the game will just let you play the card. So can you pl is is there a mystical sand card like that you can just buy from the shop, or do you have to fuse it in order to get mystical sand? Both. Uh, although you will never actually purchase Mystical Sand because she's somewhere between 500 and 1,000 star chips. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, so, because this game was uh, was released during the time when uh, Yu-Gi-Oh card passwords Ugh. actually mattered, every Yu-Gi-Oh card that you actually own comes with a password on it in the, uh, in the bottom right-hand corner. You can input those passwords in the Yu-Gi-Oh Forbidden Memories password screen in, a, in order to attempt to purchase yes. them. With the exclusion of specific oh. cards, like Blue-Eyes White Dragon, Blue-Eyes Ultimate Dragon, and I think Raigeki is in there? I'm not sure. But there are specific cards that, that even, that, that even uh, if you have the password of, you cannot attempt to purchase them. However, there are also cards that cost a, that cost a total of 1 million star chips, which is not actually obtainable. So why do the cards cost so much you can't buy them? Well, it's not it's not that the it's not that specific cards cost so much that you can't buy them. It's that specific cards cost a point that you're that you would be very literally unable to buy them even if you had infinite star chips. I know it's uh, it's a bit confusing, but the reason being is because they wanted you to have the ability to upgrade your deck via purchasing cards, but they also wanted those oh, they also wanted those purchases to be far enough off in the in, in the gr in the grinding wheel to make them worth grinding for. This doesn't work for any individual card in the entire fucking game because a majority of the cards that cost 1000 or more star chips means that you would have to get you would have to get 200 S ranks. Uh, in effectively in a row in order to be able to purchase that one card and if you have the ability to get 200 S ranks on virtually any opponent in the game well you're already close to have being near the end of the game at that point yeah like the you, right the point of late game power is late game success but if you've already won then what the hell are you doing <laughs> It was a blue-eyed silver zombie that we slayed. Yeah. <laughs> All right, now, now right by me again. When you summon these guys, you're supposed to pick a sign. What what determines which signs you can pick? Uh, each monster actually has its own its own two guardian stars assigned to it. For example, uh, Mystical Sand has got either Mercury or Saturn as signs that you can pick. Uh, the top one being Mercury, the bottom one being Saturn. You choose which uh, which guardian star that they come they come out as. But yes, this is what I meant by we were stuck here for the next four duels because in order to get Villager 3 in the free duel log, you have to beat him on your first visit uh, to the duel arena, uh, to the duel grounds. Mm. If you fail to defeat him here, one, you get a game over, and two, if you decide to leave he if you decide to leave the duel arena before you talk to him, you will never get you do not have a chance to get him. Ooh, we got a dragon zombie! Woo -hoo! Ooh, Armadillo! Before, uh, before new game plus. Yes, you have to beat the entire game again in order to get Villager 3 if you miss him the first time. Mm. So, there's a theory going around about Forbidden Memory specifically that you have the ability to choose any, uh, any particular type and get through about to the end of Chapter 2 with that type. This is complete another horseshit because of the, diver the the limited diversity of types that is actually in the game. 
Specifically, if you do not use zombies and dragons for for pretty much the end of chapter two, you will not get to the end of chapter two. It is definitely possible to use warriors to a certain extent all the way up through, oh, I want to say Pegasus and females, which are their own entire fucking category. I'll get into that. All right, right. Mm, uh, and females all the way up to about Isis. Uh, Isis or Pegasus. By the time you get to Isis or Pegasus, you need to switch over to Thunder and Dragons because you won't take down Kaiba with, uh, with females. It can be done, but the amount of grinding that you have to do in order to do it is significantly more than just switching over to Thunder and Dragon. Here, go, Magical Ghost! Terror Lightning! Yeah. Zap, 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 zap. Sure. Hey, she's got Pluto as the Guardian Star. Totally makes sense that she gets Lightning. Also, the Guardian Stars technically have elemental affinities to them, with Mars being fire, Saturn being wind, Neptune being water, Pluto being thunder, Uranus being earth, <laughs> and is that the is that the main? Yeah, those are the main six elements. And then we have the light and darkness, uh, twilight and illusion. Uh, so it's Mercury. No, sun's light. Moon is dark. Uh, illusion is uh, yeah. Illusion is Venus. And Mercury is Twilight. Hmm. No. Yes, and Water and Warrior does not fuse for anything. <sighs> yep, and then we pay attention to these card characteristics because they will cause last second boons or losses to your attack power or your defense. But yep. we're probably going to be in attack mode for pretty much most of the game. Because defense, the game. For, because defense mode slows the game down, and creatures in defense mode cannot attack your opponent. Mm. Alright, here's the best monster in the game. Dragon zombie. Dragon zombie. So, dragon this should go Kairiushin. Sea King Dragon. What the fuck? Twin-Headed Thunder Dragon. This is the literal best monster in the game. What the fuck? Alright. First of all, skinny as a twig, fat as a cow, radioactive spider. Yeah, what do you think? <laughs> um, that's not too far off. I mean, his model is based off two month dark ruler, but yeah. All right. The reason why I say two headed thunder dragon is the literal best monster in the game, it's because until the very end of the game, it will in fact be the best the best monster that we have access to. There are a total of two monsters that we have access to before the end of the game that are better that are better than a twin headed thunder dragon. They are meteor black dragon, who is only better because he remains the dragon typing and has better stats, and skull knight, who is only better because of the amount of equips he can use and the fact that he has a mercury uh, mercury guardian star. That's it. Yes, Skull Knight and Meteor Black Dragon are the two literal best monsters that the player has access to. They are not, in fact, the strongest monsters in the game. Oh, God, no. The strongest monsters in the game are Perfectly Ultimate Great Moth, Gate Guardian, and Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon, none of which the player has access to. 3750 and 4500 attack, respectively. So, uh, people that are paying attention will start to wonder, wait a minute, Meteor Black Dragon's only got 3,500 attack points. How is that supposed to take down Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon? Equips. The one thing that the player has going for it uh, over his opponents is even though his deck is significantly weaker, he gets to play equip spells as opposed to as opposed to a majority of our opposition who only get to play equip spells or spells at all if they're already winning. <laughs> This particular change in the AI makes the game significantly better and much more difficult to the point where one of the um, recently released um, uh, Forbidden Memories mods at the time of this recording is Forbidden Memories Reimagined, which significantly ups the AI to the point where they're actually competent and Simon has the ability to kick your ass. Um, and it also... And with the updated AI, it is a significantly more interesting game to play through uh, for the most part. The problem that I have with the with the uh, with the majority of the Forbidden Memories mods is very simple. There is no early game in for the Forbidden Memories mods. It does not exist. the The modders tend to create an early game that is supposedly there, 
but the early game that they create is the end of, of original Forbidden Memories difficulty, where you already have a specific deck that you're that you're supposed to be going for, and if you do not have that deck, you're just going to get your ass kicked. Right. And you're supposed to and you're supposed to farm against either Duel Master K or Simon in order to get that first deck, who have got particular steroids going in that you don't have answers for. Like, I swear, for three Forbidden Memories mods in a row, Simon Warren had the ability to either start Dark Magician Girl, Dark Magician, or Buster Blader, and my deck had no monsters that could take that out. Just starting, right. Mm. Well, you would hope that and people who advance to the modding community already are sold on the game mechanics, the fusion tree, the, ty the type advantages or disadvantages. They already know all that stuff. I hope they would, because why would you jump in to a, <laughs> a way more complicated field than, than just, you know, what is already a fairly complicated game, in my opinion? Uh, I disagree with that, actually. I know a lot of people uh, would uh, would have contentions with that, but Base for Mid Memories is not honestly all that complicated. In fact... It's actually one of the easiest collectible card games on um, on the planet until the until the last until the very end of the game. I I don't get a lot of shit for this, but I I'm gonna say it. Forbidden Memories specifically is in fact the easiest CCG I have ever played. Yeah, and that's fine. If you gave me a forty card deck and you told me this guy fuses with him, this guy fuses with him, who eventually fuses with him, who eventually fuses with him, and I get to do that a few games, yeah, eventually it would sink in because my deck wouldn't because my deck wouldn't be changing that often. Well, your deck would be changing by increasing the overall power level of your base cards, but yeah, you'd be completely dependent on the fusion table. And that's where the comp and that's where a lot of the complexity for Forbidden Memory supposedly is until you spend the first two hours figuring out what the fusion table is. Once you know what the fusion table is, the first two chapters fall over to you. Right, and then the novelty of having discovered the fusion table eventually does wear off because it is the same exact formula as every it's a, well, recipes I should say. It's the same ones every single time. You get used to the creatures that come out. And you get excited when you see that you open it, that you open with the correct cards in your hand. Yeah. So really, when you look at it, this this is uh, <laughs> what what which iteration of special summonable monsters are they on now? They're beyond Ixies. I think they're beyond Link monsters now. We're not quite beyond Link monsters. We'll be uh, we'll be beyond uh, Link monsters uh, come August this year or whenever the fuck the next uh, the next Master Rule comes out. Yeah. For the record, Master Rule 5 is reverting the field state back to what it was uh, before Lynx came out. So, this is the predicate of a game that allowed you to take, I don't know, four cards in your opening five card hand, make use out of them, and make some crazy shit happen at the very onset. This game maybe not so much because you're locked to summoning just one monster a turn, but still, you can get a lot of volatility on your opening hand. Yes, you can. Now, specifically, uh, with a with a, a hand that will make you lose immediately, but have you get, have the strongest monster possible, would be Meteor Black Dragon, three Mega Morphs, and a Bright Castle. Mega with that, Morph. you will have a Meteor Black Dragon out with seven thousand attack points. Sweet. Hey, Kariushi. <laughs> yeah, sure. Because dead zombie plus fish equals sea monster. Okay. Actually, this is. Actually, this is me taking advantage of the fact that a, 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 a majority of the best car, of the best fusion materials in the game have subtypes. Dragon Zombie, despite it being a zombie type, is more or less a dragon with 1,600 attack points. That 1,600 attack threshold is very important. It doesn't look important right now because we've not actually seen a th uh, base Thunder Dragon yet. But the way that the, the fusion table was supposed to work and doesn't end up working, I will explain in the next part, as we are officially, you know, about to end Chapter 1. We'll end Chapter 1 in the next part. Oh, Mr. Kennedy, you entertain me. Do not disappoint me.